fourth place. They're almost going so slow at times in the turns, though, because of the turbulence, their skid fit hardly even comes into effect. Now down the back shoot, though, as Tom Baker holds on to second place. Remember, you go for not only placement in these heats, but a fast time. If you get the fastest time of the day easily, you'll go into the final regardless of placement. That's right. Now, neither one of these boys are going to slack off just for that very reason. They run four laps here on the Maumee River in Toledo, the fourth annual International Grand Prix event. Parallel rollers, you're here about those a lot. That's the waves bouncing off the front wall, right back into the boat in the same direction, so you go along the way. Oh, you can see right there, Don Wheeler didn't give Tommy any room at all. <laughs> That's a family feud on the water is what it is. Look at the lead now extending by Wheeler Baker and Tommy. No wonder the lead's bigger. Tommy's going down the water. Long gone, the name of the boat, and he's finished for this race anyway. So Wheeler Baker now, it appears, in a cakewalk as he comes around that second turn and goes down along the wall, as Steve has talked about. And also, there's some nasty winds that come out. Ooh, look at that. It's picking up his right spots, and he'll get down there and make shoot, Steve, and then the wind comes from his right. There's Thundercraft. And coming down on the second turn again, the Irishman, driven by Stephen Kerr out of Cincinnati. That's the Cherry Street Bridge. He goes down the back chute. Coming into the turn just as Wheeler goes out of it is the Thundercraft and Pierre Levine out of Canada, standing driver. Oh, Don, these turns are so tight. It makes it so difficult for these drivers to negotiate this course and come off those turns with any kind of appreciable speed. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Wheeler Baker goes airborne in the second turn. He comes down the main chute. The checkered flag away. First place to Wheeler Baker out of Chester, Maryland. And he still has the right spots enough there as he waves to the crowd. So there are your results. Wheeler Baker, Pierre Levine coming in second after... Tom Baker going dead in the water in Long Gone, Stephen Kerr, and then Ken Brody. Let's go down to the pits and talk with Wheeler. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we've got Alan Bordemeyer and, and Wheeler Baker. Wheeler, you know, we talked earlier about maybe the, uh, the wind conditions, the water conditions, might be a bit of an equalizer for a boat that doesn't have a blower, but maybe a little bit lighter. He had a good seemed, start, too. Seemed to work pretty good. I was running alongside my brother, and he had all the power in the world, and uh, was able to use what I had. But, well, let me tell you, it's, that's a challenge out there. <laughs> that's a big challenge. Ooh, it's rough. He did a beautiful job. He's a heck of a driver. There's your winner, Heat 2B. And Steve, since Toledo is the glass-making capital of the world, only appropriate to have a skyline like this. We'll be back. Steve Reynolds is down on the pits with another combatant. Bruno Bressois. You've seen the water. What do you think of the, of the conditions of the course? How are you going to handle that rough water? Oh, uh, that boat, uh, like yesterday, was uh, pretty good. The handle of the boat still, uh, you know, good. I'm pretty sure uh, I'm going to run uh, good on this water. Have you got any surprises for him? Oh, <laughs> let's see what's happening. <laughs> okay. okay, Don, back to you. Couple of drivers to watch for. Mark Tate also driving a seven-liter boat, very light and powerful. And you met Bruno out of St. Timothy, Quebec. Looking at the field again, Tate in the lighter J boats and Harry Richardson driving the 1988 in commemoration of the World Championships next year. And this five boat field ready to go with our second elimination heat. Here we go with the start. Richard Wilhelm in boat 404, the Golden Princess in first place in that conventional ladder back sitting behind the engine. Lane number two, as you see Mark Tate in lane number one in that cab over and he's got the lead the lighter j boat a seven liter doesn't have the blower in that engine it's a stock seven liter and he's got the lead again steve the lighter boats yeah don it seems that the lighter boats are taking a little wider arc into the corners keeping the boat speed up and getting better acceleration wheeler baker was successful in his seven liter boat in the earlier competition and he took a first place and tate now following suit on the inside wilhelm on the outside steven skew in another cab over, a good battle for second and third. Look at them as they follow Tate, a rooster tail lead as they now go into the Cherry Street Bridge. You've got a ladder back 
That's the design, the maker of that boat on the inside, sitting behind the engine is Wilhelm against Steve Skew on the outside with a cab over, and look, that's what the Lauterbeck is known for. Oh, John, that's pure horsepower right there. <laughs> Acceleration. In the meantime, you've got, again, that lighter boat, Tate driving, his wife, Sandy, watching. Sandy Tate, a great driver in the two and a half liters. We saw her down in Florida compete in a brand new boat. Tate in first place. This four lap beat again, Tate with a solid lead, staying rather wide, and Skew keeping that ladder back and Wilhelm on the inside. Trying to have a rooster tail lead. You know, Don, I think it's becoming apparent that the lighter boats, well, we've got a boat in the back straightaway going down. Mark Tate seems yeah. to have blown an engine. Maybe he pushed it too hard. He had a huge lead, and as we said, he's got about 500 horsepower less than the Grand Prix boats. But boy, he had it going for a long time. Mark Tate probably done for the day unless he gets into the Connie or possibly the semi-feature. In the meantime, here's the battle. First place, Q. Q in first, and Wilhelm in second. One more lap to go. Bruno Brassois now making his move as he comes up trying to get into second place. But currently, again, in that ladder back is Wilhelm, the Golden Princess, both GP 404. Back to the leader again is Q going down the back. She looks pretty smooth, not as bad as it's been. And as he goes into the second turn, the final turn about to wrap up fourth lap is Steve Q. Q out of Unionville, Ontario, another Canadian driver, picks up the 400 points and will be in the final at the end of the day. Second place, Brassois nips Wilhelm at the finish line, taking second. So out of the five boats that started, only three finish. Q, Brassois, and Wilhelm in our second elimination heat. Everything you predicted is coming through. I mean, the roughness, the handling, and the seven-liter boats are doing better because they're lighter, I guess. Yeah, you know that we talked about this course having having an equalizing factor to it. We've got the stock seven-liters, not quite as much horsepower, but they're an awful lot lighter. And what they're doing is they're flying over some of this chop. And then what's happening is the Grand Prix boats can't use all the horsepower that's there. And so it's a real equal race. So far, the, the lighter stock sevens are coming out on top. In the other two preliminary heats, well, the boat camps had their problems. Only two boats finished in each event. Robert Perrette getting a victory. And in the other one, Mike Endries. He won it in boat 17 without its customary rear wing. Here's Steve Reynolds. Well, a win is a win is a win. But tell me, how was the water condition? And what was it like without the wing? Well, the boat felt real good without the wing. Uh, I'm real happy with the way the boat was riding. Water's kind of rough. Um, Right in through this section here, yeah, from the start line to the first corner, boy, it's rough. What? You break this wall here, and that wind catches you, and it just puts you every other way. Uh, the rest of the course isn't too bad. It's rough, but we've got a big boat, and uh, we seem to be handling the rough water fairly well. No complaints from down here, Don. <laughs> this is the winner. The river hasn't been so kind to all the boats, though. This is the executive, driven by Bruno Brissois. They got problems. Right, We're losing our pan. Oh, the pan? The pan. There's about 30 screws missing. So they have some quick repairs right. to make in order to get back into the race. We'll return in just a moment. Welcome back to Toledo. I'm Don Poyer with Steve Reynolds. And the two and a half stocks are heading out for their first heat of the day. Steve's down in the pits with one of the drivers. Alan, what are you going to do out there? I want to try and go for the win, get a good start. and Just read the uh, read waves and go for it. That's the game plan. Mr. Oslin will have to look out for this gentleman, though, out of Brainerd, Minnesota, Tom Yeager, defending national champion. And Alan Oslin again, out of the state of Michigan. Here are the combatants for this, the first preliminary heat for the two-and-a-half-liter stocks. There's the start, all the boats behind the starting line, and Alan Oslin in boat number 52. Steve just talked to Alan Oslin with a great start, and Yeager is in second place. Well, that was a nice move on the second buoy end, Don. He really made it rough on the rest of the field. That was a good move. Look at the lead for Oslin as he comes out of the first turn, going down the back chute in front of this better than 80, 85, maybe even 100,000 fans, depending on the weather, keeping some of them home. But there's the lead, and second place is the twister right there, Tom Yeager out of Minnesota. So he moved up on that back chute, and now, ooh, got a good horse race coming down the main straightaway after the first lap. Alan Oslin in first place. Second place, Tom Yeager knocking on the door and holding on to that inside position. You were thinking, Steve, maybe more and more boats are coming outside. Yeah, it seems to be the strategy that's developing here, the outside. And look, right there at the second buoy again. again. Yep, that's a very strategic spot here. 
Oh, as a result, now Oslin with a good lead. Jaeger having to slow way down coming out of that first turn. So Alan Oslin out of Westland, Michigan is in first place. Tom Jaeger out of Brainerd, Minnesota in second place. Henry Kosciusko in third place. He's out of Harper Woods, Michigan in bad habit. Boat number 32. But Oslin right now, he keeps looking to his left and look who doesn't give up. Tom Jaeger again knocking on the door coming down the main chute, Steve. And Mr. Oslin gave Mr. Jaeger a little bit of room. He's going to take advantage of it move into first place, I'll bet you. That's amazing that he could pinch him twice in the turn and he still is coming up for more and has the acceleration to do that with that Ford engine coming up and racing well. Oh, this time he didn't close the door on him, Steve. Well, he didn't have quite enough room. Now you see Mr. Yeager's got room on the inside. I think Tom's going to move into, into first place right about now. Well, he seems to have better acceleration. Remember, they're all driving with Ford engines, 2.3 liter, kind you can get in your home automobile. But Tom Yeager, out of Minnesota, moving into first place. Kosciusko in boat number 32. Bad habits, still in third place. Another Michigan boat. And going down the main straightaway. Look how choppy it is now. Skidfin almost doesn't do any good. They're not going fast enough because of the water. They've got to come around and come down into the main straightaway. Jaeger in first. Oslin in second. Moving to the inside, Steve. And the winner will be Tom Jaeger. Jaeger won the national championship last year. Not the overall point series, but the championship race. He got a win here. Oslin second. Kosciusko third. Let's go down to the pits. Tom, can I get a word with you? Sure. Now that was a great heat, the two of you battling back and forth. Was that a strategic move on your part to take the inside? Yes, it was. I wanted the inside. It's always shorter on the course on the inside than it is the outside, but he beat me on the start by just a little bit, so it made a heck of a race out of it. Is the water conditions a real factor for the boats your side? Uh, yes, it is. It's pretty rough, although it seemed better today than it was yesterday. Real close race, though. Real close. Lots of fun. And we've got our winner right here. I've been wanting to talk to this guy a long time. We got the man in yellow. What's your favorite color here, Jack? Uh, I'm partially yellow, Don. Thank you. <laughs> I try to keep it a secret, but you know. Look at look at these tennis shoes. Oh my goodness sakes! You don't wear those on the streets, do you? No, I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> now come on, you're you're 30 miles, 20 miles away from me. That's where you live. Uh, your hometown favorite, the only local boat, I think, aren't you? Uh, yeah, the only local boat in my class. That's true. Yes. You nervous right now? The water out there. Matter of fact, I am. Yes, sir, I am. This is the quietest I've seen you since Thursday. I am somewhat nervous, to be yeah. honest. With you. I had the bad, the bad start in the final yesterday, and the water's about as rough as it was yesterday, and I'm a little concerned. Yes. Be careful. I'm going to do the best I can. Even the crew is done with their yellow shoes. Crew chief, Frida. Jack's good buddy is on the team as well and got the uniform on. Never know what you'll find in boat racing. Here's Eric Crothers out of Canada, outstanding driver who's heading out now for the second elimination heat in the two and a half stock. Eric will have to do battle with people like Steve Jones out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And there's Crothers, the man who built his boat himself. As the clouds thicken a bit over the Mahi River here in downtown Toledo, the second heat for the two and a half liter stock. Jack Bellhauer, the man we talked to a minute ago, Bob Newman, a fighter pilot, he's out there competing. Here we go with a start. James Jackson with a great start, but he's in about lane number five, and he's got a lot of people, Steve Reynolds, on the inside of him as he heads for the Cherry Street turn. Oh, look right, Don, I, I don't know, that looked awfully close to me. <laughs> Steve Jones was on the inside of him, and his boat is called Meek My Day. I think it just rained on his day, <laughs> at least his parade. And right now, James Jackson is in first place. He's out of Sinclair Shores, Michigan, not that far from Detroit. On the inside, to the right of your screen in the blue boat, blue and white is Steve Jones, and Eric Crothers on the outside. So you've got three outstanding drivers out there right now. And look at Jackson constantly looking to the inside now as he bounces his way through that second turn. Well, he knows he's got a fast boat to the inside. He's got a fast boat to the outside. That's a double reason responsibility to keep them off. Well, he really does. Harry Carruthers right now looks like he has elected to go to the outside. He is the driver out of Canada. Here he is on the left of your screen. Good driver. Made the boat himself, as we said, and it looks like he has elected, as you said, Steve, to go to the outside and keep up the boat speed. He is in second place, trailing this man, James Jackson, out of the state of Michigan, about 50 miles to the northwest of here. But look at Carruthers now, only a rooster tail back. 
as they go into that, again, that second turn where a lot of the chop is. Look at Crothers coming around the outside now, keeping up the boat speed as he tries to challenge from the outside. At the same time, he's got Jones back a ways, but on the inside. Now he's looking over his right shoulder as he's looking for the rest of the student body. Jackson, and here's Carruthers out of New Brunswick, Canada. I would say, if Mr. excuse me, Don, if Mr. Jackson is legal, he's doing an excellent job of strategically keeping the other drivers off of him. He's really making Carruthers use all the course, isn't he? Wide in the turns, rounding those straightaways, and it's working. But look at Carruthers now. He's moved within a rooster tail. He was that way on the other lap coming down the back shoot, so he must be doing something right as he goes down the back straightaway. Again, James Jackson, we don't know if he's legal yet. He may get disqualified for that move into the first turn. Why not the start of the race? Oh, boy, he caught one there in the chin. As he comes around, though, there's Carruthers. Let's see if he can catch him. I don't know. Steve Jones back away to third place. There's Carruthers on the outside. Nope, the checkered flag waiting for James Jackson, who gets the win, and we'll get an official ruling in just a moment. Carruthers, second place. Here are the numbers. James Jackson coming in number one, Eric Crothers, Greg Barker, then the fighter pilot, Bob Newman, and Jack Fellhauer in the S-105. Down to the pits. Jim, can I get a word with you? Uh, you took kind of an inside or about down the middle of the road there in the start. Did you have enough room to move over? I mean, you, you when you came down for the start, you were about in the middle of the pack. When you got to the turn, you were in great position, one of the inside lanes. Is that your strategy? Yeah, was it. Uh, it's a little rough on the inside, and the, the way the buoys are set up, I wanted to take an outside sweep into the, the entrance pin, and it worked out just right. You had to be pretty careful. I mean, you had nine of the boats out there. Well, I, I, I made sure I had enough room, and I think I had more than ample overlap, so uh, it all turned out real good. Steve? Uh... You got a little wet out there at the start. Do you feel like you got cut off? Oh, I think I got it pretty bad. I mean, that lane uh, closed up on me coming down, and right when I was getting ready to go about eight seconds at my mark, it started going and going. I said, no, I can't do this. But like, it closed. I had no place to go. Breathed the hair, went through, and we were, we were catching them. But Is that racing, or are you steam? Well, what can you do? I mean, they make the call. You can't really protest the call. But my lord, it's two days in a row. My driver got it yesterday. I'm getting it today. I mean, I showed this, I guess. Well, the people saw it here, and we've just gotten word from Paul McKee, the head referee. James Jackson, indeed, cut off the field and was disqualified. Back in a minute. Welcome back to the river. I've got Wheeler Baker and brother Tom Baker here. Now, I want to ask you two guys, you know, did you guys uh, fight when you were growing up like all brothers do? <laughs> like dogs and cats. Oh, that... <laughs> now, what happens when you guys get out on a race course? I mean, is it, is it brother against brother? You give each other a little bit slack or uh, none I, at all, huh? I give him as much as he give me. How much do you give him? None. See that? <laughs> What's fair is fair, right? Now, you're the older. I mean, do you look out for your younger brother? Well, uh, being the older, you know, he's supposed to show me some respect and give me the inside. You saw what he did, right? Yeah, how much respect you give him? None. <laughs> <laughs> Just down home racing, you know, brother against brother, having a good time. Back to you, Don. Steve, coming up, we've got the two-and-a-half modifieds. We only have ten boats in the pit, so we'll have one prelim, and then the final, so everybody's got a shot at the money. Yeah, the water seems to be calming down a little bit. I wonder if the strategy will be now to move back to the inside for the faster boats. We'll have to wait and see. A little more horsepower than the stocks, but the same weight, so it should be fun. A couple of drivers to watch. Defending national champion, Chris Oliver. And another driver we saw in Florida, Doug Felster. So we've got 10 boats for this, the only prelim in the two and a half modified. Bigger engines, more speed, and we may have a couple of boats, at least two or three, that jump the gun, Steve Reynolds. So here they go into the Cherry Street Bridge. Well, it's even getting tight down in this turn, Don. You know, this turn has really developed into a real dogfight down here. Well, it's been the key to the whole course, as you pointed out throughout the day. Let's see who emerges after that first turn. It is the defending champion. Every penny, that is Chris Oliver out of Annapolis, Maryland. Chris Felster back there, I believe, in second place. We'll keep an eye on as the boats start to string out a little bit. But Oliver, out of Annapolis, good driver, and he may be one of the guilty ones who jumped the gun. But you can see Chris's experience coming in. He's making it difficult for all the boats as he goes through that turn. Mike Bowler in second place on the way outside as he comes in second place with this. A good shot of Oliver coming down. I want to call it the steak sauce or something with an A1 on the side. Corny, I know, but 
I still have the reflex. That was Muller on the white boat going by. You knew I'd say that. If you say Holy Toledo, we're in big trouble. Holy Toledo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going on the second lap. Oliver, physically still in first place, but we don't know if he jumped the gun. Could be as many as three boats. But Oliver, excellent driver, high points champion last year, which is even more honor worthy as far as the overall year as opposed to winning the national championship race the single race of the year that's how he got the a1 yeah chris has really figured out a good line in this course don he's taking right down the middle about lane four and really making it pay off again a great shot of oliver coming down the headers on the right side of the boat second place in the a98 is mike muller and now oliver beginning to stretch out that lead some really an outstanding driver got good equipment doing a good job as he's into that bumpy Terry Street turn and down the back street. Felster beginning to move up now in third place against Muller who is in second place. So a good battle for second and third. As they go down the back street, Felster on the outside. We've got a boat dead in the water as we see Oliver come around the turn now for the final time. He will pick up first place for the meantime anyway, Steve. Yep. Chris Oliver, the winner of the only preliminary heat, will get a final result here in just a moment. But Felster has now moved into second place and Big Doug will come in at number two. However, if Reynolds and Poyer had to call it right now, it looks like Doug Felster will get the win. Oliver and two other boats may have jumped the gun. Let's go down to the pits now with Steve. Chris, you did everything right. You know, you led every lap. The only problem was you got over the line just a pinch early. That's what I thought. <laughs> it looked like it, but everybody was there. There didn't much choice. You had to go. And Well, you know, sometimes you get committed and you've just got to go. Well, you know, I drop back. Somebody's in front of you then. Yeah, but I it, thought I did. I, I really thought I jumped the gun. I was surprised. Somebody didn't come over here and say that I didn't. <laughs> Does the water look any better for you guys now than it was in the morning? It's terrible out there. You know, you just... It's hard to race on some of this, and that's a heavy boat, and you got to go fast to keep the air under it. All right, rough thank ride, you. Rough ride. Thanks, Chris. Head referee Paul McKee on the right is assistant Mike Noonan looking at the official photo, and yeah, a couple of boats, in fact, three boats jumping the gun. Let's hear from them. Paul McKee, Mike Noonan, how exactly do you come up with uh, pictures like this and to make decisions? Well, this picture is actually uh, synchronized electronically with our large digital clock, and at the instant that it goes to zero, uh, we take a picture uh, from the shoreline, and this gives us the exact instance of the start when uh, any boat would be disqualified. In this instance, we had three boats which did dump the right. gun, uh, and it also saved the boat A-98. Uh, easy to make decisions that way, Mike. Yes, it is. Uh, like I said, we had the four numbers, but uh, 98 was in there, and the picture shows that he was uh, safe by about, so oh, I'd say, six inches. Well, we just got word from the tower, Doug. You got the victory. Yeah, I figured I did. I saw they were all pretty early on the clock there, and that's why I backed out of it. Didn't let my anxieties get ahead of me. Well, they say a good racer has patience, huh? Right, right, that's right. Congratulations. Thank you. Another part of Toledo that local residents are awfully proud of is their zoo. And we'll return to the International Grand Prix right after this timeout. <laughs> Sue Troxel of Turbo Blue, the official suppliers of racing fuel, presenting a check to Tony Scartin, Vice President of Inboard Racing of the APBA. Our thanks to them. And we've got some drama, Steve Reynolds, developing down in the pits. This is Bob Newman out of Largo, Florida. What's the problem? Well, it looks to me, Don, like they've got a poor electrical connection. Here comes some of the crew with some parts. And, oh, look <laughs> out, he fell into the water. He's going to have a scab on his knee by tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, but that young man will have a trophy in school <laughs> come Monday morning. Other boats going out. We're close to the one-minute gun. He's got to be up on a plane by then. What? They're working on the the battery, and again, the solenoid. It looks like they're all right. He is on his way. Very quickly, the rundown now for the final. The two-and-a-half-liter stock. Steve Jones on top. Kosciuszko and company. You heard the gun. Good start, and it looks like Steve Jones on the way outside in the blue and white boat. Great start. Here he comes into the turn, Steve Reynolds. Oh, yeah, but see, Steve Jones has given the boats to the inside plenty of room. That's a gentleman move. Let's see if he comes out of this turn on top. The block boat going by. Bobby Newman back into the race after that uh, dramatic moment before he got his engine going. But the man in front, Steve Jones, out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, holding on to first place. He was washed out in the earlier heat. This time, nothing but clear water, bumpy as it is. But it's clear out in front of him. The man he's got to be concerned with, the twister, Tom Yeager. And he'll be looking for him. I think he's on the outside as they come down completing the first lap. There's Twister here on the outside, nearest to the camera, as they come down the main straightaway. 
Tom Yeager out of Brainerd, Minnesota. Staying on the outside, as some of the drivers have chosen to do. Nice turn by Steve Jones. Yeah, his experience is really showing through here, Don. It looks like possibly Yeager was trying to go to the inside. Let's see where he's at now as they go down the back chute. Again, Jones. No, he stayed on the outside, so he's holding on to second place. Joe Kreitzer in the S92. They call it the Little Joe Special in third place. Jones again going into that rough, rough second turn, coming down the main straightaway, and the twister beginning to come up and chip away at that lead. Yeah, Yeager's moving up on him. Jones looking to his right. He knows he's right next to him. He's saying, I got a race. I got a race in my hands. Well, this first turn has been a battleground. Oh, oh look at that. A lot of air. A lot of air. This first turn has been a battleground all day long. Don, look at him fight for the lead here. Now he's pushing him. He's pushing him pretty well when you got that Russell Daly, but he's moved to the inside. Jaeger now trying to accelerate up the back suit on the inside, lane number one. Now it's just horsepower, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and he's got a little bit more. Now Steve doesn't have room to move over and take the lane away from him. This is going to be a tight corner. No way you can shut the door on him now. You see Kreitzer in third place. And moving up also is 105, Jack Bellhauer in S105. But there's the race for first and second going into the final turn and the final here in Toledo. On the inside, it's Tom Yeager out of Brainerd, Minnesota. On the outside, Steve Jones out of South Carolina. I think Yeager's got it. Coming down the main straightaway the last time, the Twister, the national champion in the championship race last year, 1986, Tom Yeager gets the victory. Oh, what a beautiful race for both Yeager and Jones. Well done, gentlemen, well done. Here they come, the checkered flag for third place. Give it to Phil Hauer in both 105. Final results, Tom Yeager and Jones putting on a great show. Phil Hauer nipping Kreitzer, vote S92 in the final. Let's go down to the pits. Tom, end of a long day, but a successful one for you. Very Again, you moved to the inside, and, and, and you took position, and, and you finally won the race. It paid off. It did. Uh, it was a tough race. It was even rougher than the first heat, but uh, it paid off. Well, you really got loose on about the third lap, just coming down to front straightaway. The boat really got aired out. Very loose, very loose. I had to get out of it there a little bit, slow it down, get it back down on the water. But... Yeah, but you kept your composure, you took the inside, you went on, and uh, you and Steve really put on a heck of a battle out there. Well, thank you. It was fun. It was great. It was the best race of the day for me, anyhow. Wire that one, huh? Beautiful. Steve, you have had an interesting day. I <laughs> believe. Well, we, I guess we won the first heat, you know, as far as the, uh, bro not the protest, but the drilling, and I told myself, I'm wiring one of my Miami outside starts, and I guess I did, and I'm real happy about it. And what can I say? The guy got me on the back stretch. I just couldn't do no more. Looks like he flat out got you on horsepower. He's well, driving but, well. Yeah, it did, my boat just wasn't handling the same way yeah. down the back as it was on the front. Believe me, the foot was in it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're basically happy. We're getting there. Sure. Another landmark near downtown Toledo, the University of, and home of the Rockets. More final heats coming up after this. Don Poyer along with Steve Reynolds, and the weather has been kind to us here in Toledo this afternoon. It's been a fun afternoon, as a matter of fact, in boat racing, too, and we've got a final coming up here in the modified. And here we go with the start. Roughly 10 boats as we go, and Chris Oliver and the A1 boat, every penny, keep an eye on it. As they go down, everybody's legal on the start, and Oliver in about lane number two in the red boat, coming into the turn for the first time. Belster in the red and white on the outside in the 77 boat. Let's see how they set up going down the back chute for the first time. Oliver on the inside, Felster on the outside. The two drivers that went at it earlier. Oliver, the guy who jumped the gun in the first heat too, Steve, and he's got first place this time. Well, Chris's experience is starting to show through, Don. He not only negotiated that first turn, but the entrance to the back straightaway very well, and now he's got a very good lead. Felster now, as you saw in the background going by, he has chosen to go to the outside. Trying to keep up the boat speed. Here he goes, kind of peeking out from behind the tower. He's in second place, but Oliver out of Annapolis, Maryland in first place. Trying to pick up yet another victory. He was the national points champion in 1986 and well on his way here in 1987. Felster mm -hmm. moving up within a rooster tail now, though, Steve. Oh, yeah, but you see, Chris just gave him one of the traditional hips right there and picked up about six or seven boat lengths. That's definitely experience showing through. There's Felster out of the state of Michigan. And again, back into third place is Mike Muller. 
point. It's still choppy up in that turn where the wind is beating the current going against the current. Then you really got problems. But tell me the truth as we see Chris Oliver going down the straightaway. Come on, Reynolds. Don't you miss driving <laughs> some of these smaller boats? Oh, I tell you, it would sure be an awful lot of fun to be out there right now. These guys are really having fun. I mean, the guy next to me is racing with about 28 feet of boat and, uh, <laughs> what, 2,600 horsepower and a turbine engine. A little different from this, but by golly, this is so exciting. In the meantime, look at second place now is Mike Moeller. Felster is falling back to third, so Moeller making his move into the number two spot. Down the back shoot again in every penny, the A1, Chris Oliver in first place. He's got this one pretty much under control if he can just keep it running now. Keep in mind, what do you have? About, uh, what, 300 horsepower in the air? Yeah, we're looking at about 300 horsepower in these modified engines as opposed to about 150 horsepower in the stock. So there's quite a bit of difference here. The green flag for some of the boats, the checkered flag for the red boat, that being every penny and Chris Oliver coming in first place in our Toledo Grand Prix final for the modified. Second place, Mike Muller. Third place in the final, but number one overall for the weekend, Bill Morrison. We'll talk about that more. Chris Oliver getting the final victory. Mike Muller, Morrison in a Ford with a four-cylinder engine going against the Modifieds, getting the win for the overall weekend. Well, let's talk to Chris Oliver. Steve? Don't tell me this. <laughs> now, come on, come on. Now, you finished first twice. And you won one. Does this make up for the jump and the gun in the first heat? Oh, we need the points. It, 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 definitely the boat runs good, and I'm sorry that it jumped and only the one this, but we got to say we did take a little bit of a problem. The plug line fell off. Oh, well, you did a perfect job. I mean, the start was right on the money. And you know, we saw the pictures from the first heat about a half a boat length. Yeah, well, you know, you travel along there at 100 mile an hour. It's close. You had a good day, though, didn't you? Oh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's, this is an experimental engine for us. We've had nothing but great with it, but it works. That's the bottom line. It works. <laughs> <laughs> William, overall winner today. Nice going. Uh, it's rough water, but I think we, we proved that the, the boss is back, but Ford was really running for us. I was going to say, now we're talking four-cylinder Ford here, aren't we, in the modified? Right. right. It's a tremendous class. There's over 17 different engines that are run, and we were just glad to be able to bring the Ford home first. Well, congratulations. Great weekend for you. Oh, it was a beautiful weekend. We couldn't ask for anything better. Some spectacular shots coming up. The Grand Prix Final on deck. Welcome back, everyone. Mike, you're getting ready to go out for the GP final. You've got some tough competition ahead of you. Who do you look for in this race to give you your toughest run? Well, Steve, Bob Theoret, he's been a perennial for years and years, and uh, he's not going to give it away easy. He's going to be tough. Uh, uh, Wheeler Baker's been running some impressive speeds all weekend. John Theoret with the Vista Nash, he's tough as can be. I know he won our national their last event last year. I was second there. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight out there. But you're going to have fun at it, correct? Oh, we're going to have fun at it. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a rough race, but uh, we're... We're going to give it our best. Now, what is it about these Canadians? I mean, what, what is it about these Canadian GP drivers that makes them so tough? Geez, I don't know what it is. They're fearless. I got to <laughs> believe they just put the hammer down and away they go. Uh, uh, they, they are good drivers, though. Uh, they, they're not afraid of them, though. All right. Well, good luck to you, Mike. Thanks, dude. Well, here's one driver Mike didn't talk about. I think the minimum racing age is 16, but uh, only time will tell. Time to go racing. This is the final, the last race of the day, and everybody's way early as they come up to the line. There's the gun. And as you can see, Mike Hendries was crawling when the gun went off. Let's see if he can catch up with the rest of the field. It's the Thorette family out in front. Robert Thorette in front on the lane number one. Lane number two, the Miss Danish two, and that's John Thorette as they go into the first turn. What a traffic jam. And now we've got Robert Thorette in lane number one. John Thorette on the outside. Richard Wilhelm in another conventional style ladder back hole going into the first turn. Steve, what do you think so far? You know, the only thing getting these boats around the race course right now is guts and pure horsepower. And coming around the outside, one of the favorites, and that's Mike Hendries, the man who was so concerned about that leader, Robert Thorette, completing lap number one. Well, it's just pure horsepower that's put Mike Hendries right back in this race again. With the Danish two on the outside, Hendry's moving up in third generation. Oh, he hit a buoy on the inside, Steve, but he's challenging for second place. The leader of the GP Valley Field, Bob Thorett, coming up on the inside. is Mike Hendry's out of Union Dale, New York. He's now in second place. John Thorett is in third. 
Back away. There you go. There's oh, a... there's Wheeler Baker. He's taking that light boat. He's in this race, too. Well, he got pinched right at the start of this thing. He timed it pretty well, but he ran into traffic at the start. In first place, you saw Mike Hendricks moving up on the inside. There's the Danish two with Jean Foret. And moving up is the prime mover, that being Wheeler Baker. But this is Mike Hendricks in first place. Second place, Robert Foret. Third, Jean Foret. Again, coming into that very, very tight first turn near the Cherry Street Bridge. Look at this, on the inside, Wheeler Baker trying to move up on Foret on the inside, and Foret on the outside for that matter. Oh, they left him a big lane, and he'll probably move into second place. Now that mistake, that may be a mistake. On the, you see, Wheeler's got out into second place now, and he's contending for first. Well, you can't leave an opening like that for a guy like Wheeler Baker. But in the meantime, up in that north third, or rather the south third, where it's been so choppy, this heavier boat, the third generation of Mike Hendrys has a checkered flag waiting for him. He'll take the fourth annual Toledo International Grand Prix Final. Great job, great job in driving. Wheeler Baker should also be congratulated. Second place to Wheeler. Here in the final, again, Mike Hendrys getting the victory. Wheeler Baker with about, what do you think, Steve? 350, maybe 500 horsepower less. Oh, at least. In a lighter boat. Coming in second place, Richard Wilhelm. Coming in third. Down to the pits. Don, I'm down here with the winner of the GP final, Mike Henrys. Mike, I want you to tell me about this new strategy or the trolling start. <laughs> oh, my, my, Robert Fioretta is really fast, and, and he, he gets to the corner and he'll push you out, and I knew that if I didn't have the inside from him, I'd uh, be in trouble down in the first corner. He put me out to the bridge. So uh, I wanted the inside so bad. My timing was actually off on the start, and... Uh, um, I just about had to park the thing, and <laughs> she's a good girl, though. Boy, she pulled her way back. And well, I'll, I'll tell you something. Robert may be a fast man on this river, but the fastest man today was Mike Endry's GP winner. Congratulations. Thanks, Steve. We we're, were just ecstatic with it. It's great. great, buddy. Great. Okay. Things got a little wet at that start. You timed it well. Uh, did you get pinched? Al, come on in here. What happened in here? What happened? <laughs> that lane I had went away real quick. I, I just got trapped and I couldn't do anything. I just went through the first turn. There wasn't anything but the white water. And I saw the buoys and I headed where I thought I should be and it turned that well. But damn, if I could see anything. Okay. Did you feel like you get cut off or was this a tough choice on your decision, on your part? Uh, six six okay. one half dozen other probably. Okay, you did a great job of getting through Thank the field though, with the second place. Now, you got to be happy. Oh, I'm very happy. We're so happy with these new Ford engines. I'm good. telling you, they're fantastic. All right, well, good day. Good weekend. Thank you. Bye. And just for the record, Bob and John Thorette's boats had engine problems and both failed to finish. A final comment from Toledo after this. So, final comment from here in Toledo. There's a saying about a certain river about 50 miles to the northwest of here that you know very well, the Detroit River. They say you never beat the river, you only survive it. And I think that was probably the case here on the Maumee River in Toledo. Don't you think, Steve? Oh, for sure, Don. You know, there was no easy victories today here. Everybody that won had to really earn it. I mean, the river was treacherous, but she didn't take anybody. Sometimes, in many cases, actually, the guys had to hold back. They didn't get to use all their throttle, even though we got some pretty good time. Yeah, but what a place. I mean, the oh, fans yeah. got a tremendous yeah. show. We had about 100,000 people. Not a bad seat in the house. I'm sure everybody had a great time. I know we did, that's for sure. <laughs> well, for Steve Reynolds, I'm Don Foyer, and so long from Toledo, Ohio. Racing fuel provided by Turbo Blue. and sportswear provided by Diodora USA. From Toledo, this has been the OMC Cobra Series, brought to you by OMC and Ford, official suppliers of vehicles for the APBA. This has been a presentation 
of the Runaway Entertainment Network.